Hello, folks. My name is Dawn Scherzad. Delighted to be taking part in today's uh, product school session. I'll be talking with you today about leading across cross-functional teams as a product manager. One of the toughest things in the life of a product manager is building alignment across cross-functional teams and stakeholders. Another one is getting on other teams roadmap when there are dependencies. How do we influence and align to be in the same general direction? I'll cover some of the challenges, tools, pitfalls, and tips on how to navigate and lead cross-functional teams. And I'll cover value-driven framework as a key approach in building alignment. By way of introductions, I'm a principal product manager at Equinix, the world's largest storage, colo, and interconnections provider. Ultimately, we make the internet faster, and that's my shameless plug about my current employer. Prior to this, I was a PM in checkout at PayPal until very recently, and prior to that at Walmart in payments and checkout, and before that at Macy's and Bloomingdale's in identity access management user onboarding, security, and checkout. I sometimes work with as many as 16 to 20 cross-functional teams and a large number of stakeholders with varying mandates, roadmaps, and concerns. One of the common traits across my work at these companies was working with cross-functional teams, sometimes pulling in different directions and all the challenges and joy that came with it. What's the problem statement that we wanna talk about today? Misalignment, divergent direction, and getting on other teams' roadmap when there's a dependency. And how do we wanna do this as an influencer rather than a constant escalator? How do we inspire and invite rather than force? The problem becomes acute in larger organizations, but even in smaller orgs, they exist. If we speak within the construct of project in a highly aligned organization, the various teams and individuals are aligned in the same general direction. They work efficiently together, solve at the right time with the right functional capabilities for the same problem statement. By contrast, in a misaligned team, this doesn't happen. The boat analogy is that each person or team paddles in a different direction, tagging away. It impacts quality, execution, velocity, results, and maybe even creates a toxic environment. Let's clarify and define what we mean by cross-functional teams. A, um, this is a team, um, uh, it's a group of people with different functional expertise working together toward a common goal. It may include people from uh, compliance, for example, security, finance, and various upstream or downstream services. Typically, it includes employees from all levels of an organization. In my case, in payments, it included, for example, identity access management, the auth team, checkout, fraud, risk, legal, compliance, privacy from various regions. Some of them were distributed across markets in various countries and cities. Most of these folks did not come together in one team. I had to discover, find out who they are, what they represent and reach them within the context of a stakeholder. So what's a stakeholder? Individuals or groups that have an interest in any decision or activity of an organization. As a stakeholder, for example, security's interest was to reduce exposure to threats from malicious actors. Their OKR was no attacks even if it meant exposing the customer to undue friction. Let's look at an extreme example. The most secure way of doing business is ultimately to shut it down. 
shut down the business, close the doors, put locks on the doors, and then that way nobody will get in, right? And doors or locks, relatively speaking, are very inexpensive. But how does that solve the customer's problem of accessing and buying the goods that you have to offer? And how does that solve for business requirements of revenue? I needed to figure out how to balance friction versus revenue and get alignment in the same general direction. Another example is, let's say we want to accept a new financial instrument. Let's call it China Union Pay. And let's say we want to do this within checkout by the end of the year so that we can provide better payment options to our customer base and ultimately improve our conversion rates, our revenue and our retention. But given this dependency, how do we get on other teams' roadmap? One approach that I created over time and I used was value-driven framework. Essentially, it has to be win-win, not just for the customer and organization, and not just for my team, but what's in it for the cross-functional team or for the stakeholder? What's the benefit? What's the qualitative and or the quantitative value to them? Focus on that value. Of course, we throw around terms like customer centricity and that delivering value to the customer is ultimately the, the commonality to all. But unless we get granular and offer value to each partner by way of something they describe as success next time they're in front of their leadership, it's that much tougher to assume and march forward. And my disclaimer is that uh, my chat today is not about change management. It's not about company culture. It's not about communication strategies. I'm not going to cover uh, prioritization methodology. That can be done in another session. Instead, today is about value-driven framework. Assuming we've done our work um, in risk assessment and opportunity assessment. So let's talk about strategy first and foremost. The starting point is to know and be in tune with the company strategy as set and communicated by leadership. Let's say this year, they're not overly concerned about revenue. We want growth. The strategy is hyper growth in user acquisition. Acquire as many users as possible, then focus on making the product super sticky and get retention. And later on focus on revenue, even if it means giving away the product at a loss initially. Everything that we do, every step has to tie with this strategy or else we're at the risk of going in a different direction as leadership's vision and strategy. One good habit is to start with a customer problem. Um, if there's no problem, then there's nothing to address, right? And otherwise, rather than a laundry list of problem statements that gets lost in the noise or takes away from focus, as the customer champion, start with the biggest problem to solve for. Back to our original example, let's say that for our Asian customer segment, a large percentage of customers have um, COP and no other payment methods. The overly simplified problem statement is that the customers are not able to sign up to our subscription product unless we offer the appropriate FI. And this is consistent with our, with our growth strategy. In order to gain market share, we have to offer this FI. 
Each problem statement will need to pair with a strategic enterprise goal as driven by leadership. And each goal has to be actionable. It has to be measurable. It holds us accountable. So we want to pair them with OKRs. An example would be that we want to expand in this market from a, say, baseline of 100 users to 1,000 users by the end of this year by launching the beta version of this new FI and acquire 100,000 users by the end of next year. Our goal is beta release by year end, full release by next year. And we're going to grow our user base by 1,000x. Assuming we've done opportunity assessment and these values are correct, this is an exciting and actionable goal, right? Now, let's talk about value-driven. Our, our, our hypothesis has to provide tangible value to each of our cross-functional teams, partners, and stakeholders. Let's say in the example of security, ensure the integration is fully compliant with the security protocols and offers no security risk. That in other words, it's fully aligned with security's goals. And as a value add, they get the benefit of additional user forensics to build into their security model, to model intelligently and be able to um, distinguish between a legitimate user versus a malicious user, malicious actor, and uh, correctly limit their access and permissions accordingly. Now, with respect to, say, checkout team, and in order to get on their roadmap, the value to them, let's say, is an estimated X percent lift in their conversion rates. And let's say at $10 monthly recurring revenue from subscription product, this could potentially amount to, let's say, X number of dollars annualized. And on top of that, it solves for key customer problem and it improves NPS score. By being customer centric and value driven, we can get together, we can get through opinion based direction and misalignment. And if the other team can become more successful because of our efforts, our joint efforts, then they also have a success story to share. Why wouldn't they partner with us? Uh, why wouldn't they align, right? And finally, get that formal sign-off by way of commitment. Record it, date it, document it. We don't have a commitment by way of approvals, by way of the necessary resources to get the work done, or the timelines, right? If there's a mismatch between those timelines, it's not going to work. So we don't have it unless we have it, unless it's signed and sealed. Really crucial. This value-driven framework is the key topic I wanted to share with you today. And maybe as a final parting piece, share some tips uh, that I learned along the way. Set up one-on-ones, whether it means meet and greets earlier on, ad hoc or ongoing one-on-ones. We have a habit of working within our own silos and immediate teams. But the challenge is that we lose out on understanding other perspectives, other goals, interests, concerns, and obviously collaboration opportunities. So long before those group kickoffs and working sessions, reach out to key partners as part of discovery and definition. Let's access that rich ecosystem of perspectives. Be mindful of their time zones, working hours, and as a courtesy, set up a time and place that's easy for them to attend. Make every connection 
easy. Let's make sure that we listen. We don't assume. Probe. We can start with, tell me about. What are you working on? What's on your roadmap? Who are your users? What customer problems are you trying to solve for? What's important to you? It's really easy to focus on what's important to us, but what's also important to this other team, let's find that common ground and discuss in those terms. Let's be relevant to them. And all the way down to terminology and acronyms. In fact, let's not even use acronyms. Let's find and communicate what our partners stand to gain. Quantify the benefits as much as possible. And let's not forget to share the excitement. Let's be passionate about our initiative and our vision. Share that excitement, let it be contagious. We have a tendency to be self-deprecating. As high achievers, we often don't see our deliverables as good enough. Um, we end up with this tendency that it could have been better, but there's a lot of small wins along the way. And there's a lot of big ones, celebrate them and reward and recognize the cross-functional teams that contributed to that success. Folks, I hope uh, you have some takeaways from this talk today by way of another perspective and uh, by way of this value-based uh, framework. Thanks so much for dropping by. Until next time.